Dice Equilibrium presents Bermuda Explains the Hernia Wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the second hardest working man in show business, the godfather of soul, the eighth natural wonder of the modern world. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who puts more strut in your stuff, more rock in your walk. More cruise in your blues Let me hear it one time Let me hear it two times Let me hear it seven times Great googly boogly All right there's there's a whole backstory as to how that came about that was not really a deliberate that wasn't originally part of the tour uh, we, in, in 1987, we went out with the monkeys. We opened for the monkeys. That's the only time we've gone out with another group, uh, period, whether we were the headliner or whatever, but the monkeys had in, in 1986, MTV started playing the old monkeys TV shows from 20, it's like the 20th anniversary of, of, uh, of, of their TV show. And it was hugely popular with the MTV generation. And the monkeys decided to go out on the road. They went out in 1986, had a, had a fabulously successful tour. Well, they thought that, that, you know, they were, I don't want to say that they were a real band because they are, I mean, they had a proper band behind them and the guys could play and it's, you know, but they, they thought, well, we'll just, you know, this is great. We're going to do this in 87. Uh, you know, Weird Al is really popular on MTV. Let's bring him out. It might be a really good pairing. So we were invited out to come out and, and open for them. And in the opening spot, now, again, we, we normally did summer tours, and this was a summer tour. I think it started beginning in July. And in the summer hours, uh, the days are longer, of course. And because our show, and we did like 45 minutes, I mean, we did a, a very respectable opening set. Most opening bands don't get a set like that. You know, they'll come out and do 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30. But that was a big deal for us to take up 45 minutes and then to do a set change and the monkeys would come up. So we knew at the beginning of the tour that, and because we were using film at the time, we didn't really have a video screen, that for outdoor gigs, we, wouldn't, we were on first and it was still light out, we could not use our film. And that we had to, in order to, to facilitate some of the costume changes, that we would have to do some different things on stage. Uh, you know, we each had a little shtick that we would do while Al would go back and change. Now, during a regular show in an indoor place, you know, where it was dark and we used the video, there might be a costume change for all of us. We would, we would all change. In the situations where we were going to be outside, the plan was whoever was doing their bit on stage, you know, but while Al was changing, you know, the band would not change. And that was okay, because really the focus is on Al. And if he was in a costume, we weren't, it was okay. It was no big deal. Even, even dare to be stupid. I mean, it was fine if he was the only one in a stupid costume. So... The plan was, my shtick was, and it was right before our last song, Living with the Hernia, I was supposed to do uh, a, a stupid drum solo or a real drum solo, whatever. But I was, it was just going to be my spot for like the two minutes it took for Al to get changed and then run out in his pale blue tuxedo. And so our first show like that was going to be, and I remember it really well, it was July 7th and it was at Red Rocks outside of Denver which is a fabulous venue, classic venue, uh, and it's outdoors. So we knew that that was going to be the first time we were going to have to do our little bits and that I was going to have to do some stupid thing. And I really, I wasn't looking forward to it in any way anyway, but I figured, well, whatever it takes, I mean, it's, you know, it's a stupid show, but just, I'll do a stupid solo. Well, a few days before that uh, show came up, I was horsing around with, with Steve on the bus and I, I, jammed my left hand really bad I, I sprained three fingers on my left hand and there were we had a couple of days off so i had a, in fact it was july 4th and it was after the show july 4th so a couple of days went by and my hand was still really in bad shape and there was no way i was going to be hard enough to play the show but there was no way i was going to try and be fancy and, and sound good or bad or anything like that you know for two minutes with a bad hand so that day of the show, you know, we waited and it's like, I, I can't, I can't do my bit. I'm sorry. And so he wrote out on a piece of paper, 
he wrote out an introduction for us to do as a band and for me to read because that was supposed to be my spot anyway that i was going to read it and it was going to be like a james brown type introduction you know ladies and gentlemen would you please welcome and in al's case you know, the second hardest working man in show business and then we the band would do a stab you know, you know pow you know and, and you know and, and just this this whole silly kind of introduction thing and that would lead into the song so we did that that night and it, it turned out to be such a hit <laughs> with the audience and, and, you know, Alice thinking like, this is like, you know, this is, this is a lot better than whatever stupid solo he was going to do. We just, we kept it in the show from that point on. So from my hand being injured like that, we had to come up with something and that became the, uh, the hernia wrap, the introduction. And we kept it even in shows where we had a film that we could have used and all the rest of the shows, we still did this, this thing. It became, part of the show and it became every time we did living with the hernia after that and, and subsequent tours uh that became uh the introduction to that when we stopped doing living with the hernia and i forgot where that was but we were still doing fat that became the intro to fat and then became the fat rap and then i i started i i would i fleshed it out it became a really long i mean there was points where i'd be in the middle of this thing and i'd look to that side and al is in the fat suit you know you know waiting waiting for me to wrap this thing up you know but i added a lot a lot of things you know he's large and in charge you know pow, you know he's a big man on campus pow, you know stuff you know all, all sorts of like kind of fat references and stuff anyway so that became hernia rep became the fat rap and uh i still keep a copy with me i keep a, a physical written copy just in case he ever says you know we're going to do the 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 rap into fat tonight you know we're going to do the intro and, and I have it, you know, all the band has to decide is, you know, when they when they do the musical, the stab, they just have to decide, is that going to be a C, is it going to be an E, whatever, you know, stuff like that. So that's that's how that started, was from, from an injury to bailing me out to being a, a very good idea on Al's part. And I still have the piece of paper with that original thing written on it. And it's it's painfully short. I mean, I don't, he must have had to rush out. I mean, it's really short, but it, but I think we we added more just to give him a little more breathing room when changing, and especially in the fat suit, which was which was a much bigger deal than just putting on a pair of pants and and a shirt with Velcro so it quickly closes and a coat, and then he could run out, you know, and uh, and do his his James Brown. Uh, anyway, that was that was how the hernia wrap came about. Mm -hmm. 